Hello and welcome. This is part two of how to present in the emergency department. If you have not done so already, please watch part one of how emerge docs think. Let's say you have just finished interviewing a patient. You have managed to ask them about their chief complaint, their history of presenting illness, something about their past history, family history, medication lists, allergies, who their specialists are, and because you've watched part one, you've also managed to ask them questions about the deadly diagnosis of their presenting symptom. Now, the question is, how do you present all this information in an organized manner? Most emergency medicine presentation would be organized into a skeleton like this. It first starts with an HPI, history of presenting illness, and then leads to physical exam. After that, we want to hear your summary, your impression, and your plan. As you notice, the information you just obtained from the patient can only be fit into the HPI. The question is therefore, how do you fit all that information into the HPI in an organized way? Again, there is a skeleton that we'd like you to follow that will make it easier for you. It looks something like this. We'll discuss each of the components and then I'll give you some examples. The scheme come from a supplement to an article that was published a few years ago and it will be featured in the blog. Let's look at each of the components. First, the chief complaint. Then, we go into a one-liner opening. Third, we want to know everything about the patient. Then, why today? After that, how long they've had the chief complaint for? Lastly, what the progression of the chief complaint is. We discuss this each one by one. First, the chief complaint. It is what the patient is presenting with. It's usually a symptom. It could be chest pain, fever, anxiety, and so on. The second part is the one-liner. The one-liner sets the stage as to who the patient is. That includes the age, gender of the patient, and something in the past history that might be relevant to their chief complaint. The first two should be obvious. Number three requires a bit of thought. It requires that we pull from the previous history of the patient that might be relevant to why they're presenting today. Let's work this out with a few examples. Let's say your patient is an 80-year-old female complains of chest pain. The chief complaint would be chest pain. In your interviewing, you realize the patient has the following past histories. A hysterectomy at age 50, frequent UTIs, diabetes, gout, cataract surgery, and a history of triple coronary artery bypass surgery. In the one-liner, which medical conditions do you think would set the stage for the patient who has this chief complaint? It would be both diabetes and cabbage. And therefore, when you present, your one-liner will be something like, this is an 80-year-old female with a history of diabetes, triple bypass surgery, who has a chief complaint of chest pain. Let's say the same patient presents with dysuria and fever. Which past medical history would you put in the one-liner this time? You probably choose UTI and diabetes. Therefore, based on the past history of the patient, the past medical history that you choose to include in the one-liner might differ. Now let's move on to the third part. Everything about the chief complaint and the patient. This part should be familiar to you as you're doing your history and presenting illness. This is when we ask everything about the presenting symptom. Therefore, for pain, we may want to ask about quality, duration, intensity, anything that makes it better or worse, and associating symptoms. Once you've exhausted everything about the presenting symptom, this is also where the pertinent positive and negatives come in. Remember the deadly box diagnosis that we talked about? This is the place to put them. Let's say we use the same example as the patient we first saw, our diabetic 80-year-old patient with chest pain. After you find out everything about the chest pain, we'll go into our pertinent positive and negative questions. So what are the deadly diagnoses that we want to rule out in this patient? You may want to pause here for a moment to come with your differential. This is a list 
that I've come up with that includes acute coronary syndrome, pulmonary embolism, pericarditis, aortic dissection, and a pneumothorax. During your presentation, you want to comment on pertinent positive and negatives pertaining to each of these diagnoses. This is similar to our discussion in part one. Some students find it easier in the beginning to write out the list of deadly differential before they go into the room to see the patient. Again, let's say the chief complaint is chest pain. Writing this out helps the student keep track of the questions that you're asking the patient. If by the end of asking the patient about their chest pain, you haven't touched on some of the risk factors for any of the deadly diagnosis, you want to make sure you ask about them before you organize your whole history. When you present, after you set the stage with your one-liner, you then start off with everything about the chief complaint, so the chest pain. After that's done, you want to move on to each of the deadly diagnoses. Show us the evidence that makes the deadly diagnosis either more or less likely. For example, you could say something like, for ACS, the pertinent positive and the negatives are, the pain is similar to a previous angina, it's better with rest, and nitro. After you finish with ACS, you then move on to PE. You can say that the patient does not have any risk factors for pulmonary embolism such as immobilization, cancer, or family history. You may also say that the pain is not pleuritic and there is no associated shortness of breath. You then move through each deadly diagnosis until you've exhausted the list. This way of presenting might be very different than what you've learned before. In the beginning, it'll take a bit of time and effort. Don't get discouraged. It will get better with practice and experience. Let's go back to our HPI. By now, we've set the stage about who the patient is. We've really explored the achieved complaint. The next two are a little bit shorter. The fourth is called Why Today? Understanding why the patient have chosen that day to present is helpful for us. It could be that the condition has worsened. Is there a new symptom? Or maybe their previous medication simply is not working anymore. It is particularly useful for patients who are having symptoms of a more chronic duration. Maybe the patient has read something about a new treatment and therefore was wondering if that would be suitable for them. Understanding why the patient chose to present the time that they did help us address their needs better. Part 5 is how long has the chief complaint been going on? The last part is the progression of illness. What does that mean? It means that we want to have a bit of a bird's eye view about what's been going on, particularly if the chief complaint has been going on for a long time. Have they seen any doctors? Were there tests or medications that were given? What were the results of the tests? Did any of the medications work or not work? We want to know this information because we wouldn't want to duplicate the medication if it's already been tried. It also would be helpful if we have results from other tests that help us refine our diagnosis. If, when you're talking to the patient, you also have found some extra complaints that you couldn't quite figure out where to put it, you could put it in here, in the review of system. And therefore, to summarize the component in the HPI, you want to set up the patient, what the chief complaint is, one-liner to set the stage, know everything about the patient including all the deadly diagnosis, why do they choose to come in today, and how long has the chief complaint been going on, and what have they done about it particularly if it was a chronic complaint. That would fit into the HPI of the presentation. Now we move on further with a physical exam. In the physical examination, we want to start with the vital signs. A common order is temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, rest rate, and oxygen saturation. You also want to note if the patient is on oxygen or not. You want to comment on whether the vital signs are normal or abnormal. If any of the vital signs are abnormal, you want to state which one is abnormal. After the vital signs, you want to get into a pertinent physical examination. Pertinent physical examination means a physical examination that's geared towards the chief complaint. Therefore, let's say for a patient with chest pain, you will want to do a cardiac and RESP exam. And then move on to the summary. 
the summary where we highlight the overall clinical picture in a few sentences. Components include a setup and something from either the physical examination or diagnostic studies that strengthen your diagnosis. For example, our patient, the setup would be 80 year old female with diabetes and cabbage with increasing chest pain identical to her previous angina. The clincher could be that her ECG has shown ST changes that is suggestive of an acute coronary syndrome. Another example of a summary could be a 25 year old female who has rolled her ankle. The clincher could be that the x-ray shows a fracture of the lateral malleolus. You're simply highlighting the most important complaints and the abnormal either physical finding or a diagnostic imaging. Once you've done that, we want to move on to impression. The impression is where we ask you to tell us what you think it is. You're no longer reporting what the patient's clinical symptom is. You're now trying to fit into the most likely diagnosis. As you gain clinical experience, this part's become easier. Based on your deadly diagnosis and the most likely diagnosis, you then will come up with a plan of both testing and treatment. Testing can include blood work and imaging. Treatment can include treating the patient for their condition specifically, such as antibiotics for an infection, putting a cast on for a fracture, or it could be supportive, such as pain medication for pain relief, antipyretic for fever control. To recap, this is how an eMERGE presentation can be. We start with an HPI, then move on physical. You then summarize it with the most important clinical data that you have. You then give your impression of what you think the clinical diagnosis is and come with a plan to treat and test the patient further. As mentioned before, this may not be the way that you were taught how to present previously. Even though every attending might want their detail a little bit differently, this is a good skeleton to go on with. The more practice you have, the better it will be. We hope you find this helpful. Thank you for watching.